Hello everyone and welcome back to The Creative Collector. So quite some time ago, probably even a year or so ago, I made a video about my secret settings that would work in the Chi2 Box 1.9.5 version, I believe it was. Uh, that's been quite some time ago. So I've had a lot of people message me and wanting to know if I can update those settings into the newest free version of Chi2 Box. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert the same settings over into the newest version of Chi2 Box for you and show you some of the things that are missing from this new version compared to the old version that a lot of you have been asking about, such as infill settings and some support settings and even talk about some issues that you may be having with potential resin pockets and things like that that can disrupt your print. So let's go ahead and roll that introduction and when we come back, we're gonna dive right in. All right, everybody, so right here I have the newest version of Chi2 Box open, version 2.3. I just upgraded it a couple of days ago, and there's some things that I switched over from my old settings to this. And there's going to be a couple things that I point out to you and a couple of things that you may not be used to. So first and foremost, the printer that I've got up here today is Uniformation GK2. Uh, and I've already modded a few of the things. Uh, from my old settings onto here, and I'll show you those from the get-go. The couple things I wanted to point out here that you see right here in the beginning on the right-hand side is a cavity detector and a collision detector. Um, these are essentially what they say they are. They're supposed to detect cavities within your model and different collisions and stuff that may happen uh, if the model is, has trapped pockets, resin, or anything like that in there. I turn those off because I found out that they're not very accurate, uh, especially in the pay version. They're just not very accurate. And I would rather find those on my own at the end of the slicing process. So keep that in mind. If you're into that sort of thing, if you like that and it's done well for you, then that's great. But I just turned it off. Um, I'm not going to go through all that. I found that a lot of it is unnecessary. Okay, so on the settings here, I'm actually going to go into the settings. And on the first thing I'm going to do is under function here, I am going to click this enable support shell. Well, I want to make sure it's off and I'll explain to you why. So I'm going to make sure that is turned off and let's go ahead and open up a model here. And I'm going to take just a piece of a model that I've got from one of my upcoming Patreon models. And this is just a money bag here. And increasing the size works the same way. Like I'm going to increase this to 150%. This is based off of one six size. I know that I want to print it up to a quarter scale. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to orientate it here like I normally would do. And I'm actually going to uh, print some of this stuff a little bit later and show you some of the prints that I've got from these settings here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is a pretty good detailed texture on here. Keep that in mind. The next thing I want to do is I want to hollow it out. So um, the wall thickness here, I'm going to take my old setting of a 1.8 and apply that. Precision, this is by default at a 0.2. I'm going to leave that. Now the infill structure on here is different. Uh, on the old version, it actually says grid infill. And on this one here, it is actually cross 3D, or else you can do none. But the cross 3D is going to give me what I want from my old settings with the infill density at 5%. And so what I'm going to do is hollow this out now. All right. And as you can see here, everything is the same like it was on the old version. Now, when I went into my settings here under function and I clicked that enable support in shell, this is why. So once I dig my hole in my model, I'm going to actually just do a five millimeter and I always do the depth of five millimeter and I can use, you can use different shapes if you want. I use circular, it tends to work better. And then I'm going to just put a couple of holes in the bottom here. And also if the fail, it shows you up here that it's too thick or whatever like that. 
Um, but that's a good indicator too. And I'm going to go ahead and over here and over here. All right, now for this object here, I'm ready to add supports. I'm going to go here the same spot and I'm going to click on the supports right here. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to touch on is your uh, density is actually now on your touched tip distance. Uh, that is, I usually keep it at a 4%. Um, I find it's close to the 40% that I had or the 35% that I had on the previous version. The other thing I want to do is I want to look at the advanced settings here. And there's a couple of neat things on here that you can toy with. The one thing is the contact depth. So the deeper the contact depth, if you look up here, this is what digs into the object, to the model itself. If you go too, more, too much, your supports will actually dig in there pretty good. Now, by default, it's at 0.4. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to go to 0.3. That way it doesn't dig into the model as much. If you have a lot of textures, uh, if that digs into there, you're going to have all kinds of really deep divots, and it's going to give you problems when it comes to prep time and you're having to sand it. Other than that, everything else looks like it's pretty basic, and I'll keep it at that for the time being. Uh, right now, I'm kind of dialing everything in, and I'm going to do some test prints here. I want to see what my options are, so I'll get rid of that. All right, and at this point, I'm going to hit Auto Supports, and there we go. So everything is supported. The one good thing about this, too, is um, your textures are safe. Like if you look at the supports, they're actually up underneath the texture. So when you pull those off, even though that's pretty thin, you might want to watch out for it. Clip those off. You won't get anything on the top of the textures. So that way you don't have to do any major prep work. Now, these on the bottom, I'm perfectly fine with that because this is actually going to be sitting on a base and you're not going to be able to see those. The other thing too is if you go over here and you look at the animation, voila, there's no supports on the inside of the model. It's just strictly on the outside. So that is a click off on that setting and you won't have that problem. And there you go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back to the build plate and I'm going to look at some of these settings here and I'm going to make some adjustments under my slice settings. Now everything is pretty much on a stock level here except for a few things that I've already changed. So your layer height here is basically at a 0 0.03. That is going to give you some super detailed resolution and it will actually take longer to print. So it depends on what you're into. Are you into a quality print or are you into speed? But for the sake of being, I'm going to actually move this to a 0 0.05 millimeter. And the bottom layer count, I don't know why it does this right here. I think it's part of the uh, uniformation settings, but I'm going to pull that back to six. Exposure time, I'm going to keep it a three. And the bottom exposure time, I'm going to put up to a 35 because I really want this thing to stick to the build plate. Transition layer count, I've already adjusted to five. And as far as the bottom lift distance, I like to keep mine at six. So I'm going to put both of the lifting distance and the bottom lift distance at six. Bottom lift speed, I'll put it at 110, just like my older settings. And the retract speed, I will keep it 220. I won't mess with that. And as you see, everything here on the print side is the same as I just put into the system. And the only other thing that I'm going to change here is I'm going to turn off anti-aliasing. And on advance, uh, I'm just going to keep it stock. Now, this does have a repair option up here if you want to select anything to repair. If you feel like something's wrong, if it's not showing up right for you, you can do that. An auto layout um, basically is just, it's a quick layout to set your model on the build plate. Uh, I like to put it how I want to. Uh, it just, it just, for me, it just works better that way. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to slice this model. So once you slice the model, it actually gives you an option for detecting islands. You can also uh, start detect over here. 
So once you go through all that process, you're ready to go ahead and transfer the model over to your flash drive, put it in your printer, and hit start. And you should be on your way to printing some uh, pretty cool prints. So uh, I'm over here right now, and I'm going to show you some of the prints that actually come off of a couple of my printers uh, using these settings, and uh, they work. Uh, they work for me. Uh, it's a great starting point for a lot of other people that have said that they've had great success with it, and I'm going to show you some of the results. Here we go. All right, now here are a couple things that just came up not too long ago off the Uniformation GK2, and I've also got some stuff printing for the Saturn IV Ultra, uh, and actually this is the same settings that I used that I just showed you, and I actually printed this with water washable resin, and the details are astounding. That came out really, really nice. A lot of textures here. Uh, these just need to be uh, cleaned up and everything. This is part of the jigsaw uh, that I'm uh, printing. And the resin that I used was Resin 1 Water Fairy. This stuff comes in many colors. Uh, resin 1 has been furnishing me some uh, resin for a while to test out. And I really, really like the results. And uh, can't go wrong with that, guys. And so this is what I printed with just normal resin. I had some colors in there that I kind of mixed up. But this is the new settings on the new Chi2 box uh, right here. Uh, this is a bust of the Punisher, of course, uh, from Wicked. Uh, you can see those textures, man. They come out really, really nice. Uh, the arms come out really, really nice. Minimal support uh, divots on it and everything. And the base turned out really nice, too. So those same settings worked for water washable resin and worked for this as well and as you can see the details here are really really nice now i did go down in my exposure times to a 2.5 and these are the results of it uh, this is cured uh, this is cleaned and cured uh, this is the two face from 3d berserk and again i think the 2.5 exposure time worked really really nice it actually worked better there's not much of a difference on here on video but when you see it with the naked eye you can really tell a difference and uh, so I think the 2.5 works pretty good. And this is part of the desk for my ultimate daredevil from my Patreon. I did upgrade the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K as well. And I printed this on there. And it turned out really, really nice. A lot of details in there. A um, lot, uh, lot of good positive things going on. <laughs> and uh, I'm super impressed with the, uh, with the settings. And here's another one here. This was with the uh, Elegoo Standard uh, Gray Resin uh, for the Ultimate Superman. Um, I used those same new settings on the Frozen Sonic Mega AK, uh, and it turned out really, really well. So uh, everything works pretty good by transferring those old settings into the new updated Free Chi2 Box uh, 2.3 version. All right, everybody, I hope that helped you out in some of those settings and understanding some of those settings in the new Chi2 box. So once again, use this as a guideline. You can adjust your settings up, down, however you want to. But this right here hopefully will get you started in the right direction. Again, I tried these simple settings and it worked for water washable resin. It worked for ABS resin. It also worked for the standard resin. And I haven't had any issues so far. So maybe it'll help you as well, especially if you're getting into resin printing and you're stuck, you're kind of at odds with uh, your exposure times and things like that. This might be a good guideline to help you in the right direction. And again, everyone stay safe out there. Get out and create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And until the next video, everyone, we'll see you.